Welcome grade 12 life sciences learners. My name's Kathy Hasty, and we're going to be working through paper one and paper two of your December 2020 exams. All of this, by the way, is brought to you by Liberty. They're amazing, they care about education, and I think this is their 30th year of working together with people to make education easy for you and bring education to you. And then people, please be reminded of your Tenfold Education app. You can download this from iOS or um, the, <laughs> the apps or you, app stores, whatever app store it is that you use. Um, and then also uh, you can contact us on WhatsApp, you can message us and just say, hi, please can I have the life sciences papers and we will send those life science papers to you, the exam papers I'm working through. And lastly, you can follow us on YouTube. I mean, how awesome is that? So go to YouTube and click on at Mindset and you'll have a whole range of videos that you can choose from. Alrighty, so without much further ado, let's get started. So here we go. When we look at section A, question one, question one is always the shorts. So. It tells you your various possible answers, the following questions, choose only A to D, and blah, blah, blah. So you write down in your answer book, we're not using an answer book, we're using this. So, which part controls the amount of light entering the eye? Okay, well, it's definitely not the cornea, because light passes all the way through. The iris controls the eye, because it can contract, so it can go smaller, when it's bright light or it can go bigger when it is dull light. Your choroid layer is there to uh, um, absorb excess light and the lens while light has to pass straight through the lens. So that was an easy one. Then which one, let's just move this down a bit. Which one of the following refers to an aquifer? Now an aquifer is a, a cavity in rock where we find water. So when they drill boreholes, they drill into aquifers. Okay, so an increase in temperature, that's definitely not. Planting the same crop, no, 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 no. An underground permeable rock saturated with water, there we go, that's our answer. Um, the release of water, let's just check with chemicals from mines, no. And the reason you'll notice that I'm checking all the answers and putting little crosses and ticks is because sometimes one answer may be more correct than the other, depending on the question. So always go through all the options. All right, now, the structure of an amniotic egg that removes waste. All right, it's not the yolk sac because that contains the food and nutrients for the little um, embryo. The chorion allows for gases to exchange. The amnion is to protect, and it's also got the amniotic fluid, which helps to, to support the little embryo. It is the Allen toy, if you didn't know. But you must know that that's food, that is to, for gases exchange, and this is to protect. So it's got to be the Allen toy. Okay. Which one of the following is correct with regard to astigmatism? Now, astigmatism is something that you have which is a problem with your eyes. And um, it doesn't mean that you are near or farsighted. It means that the cornea isn't completely smooth. So it's got little indentations along the way, and that, that bends the light so you can't see properly. So it says astigmatism, light cannot pass through the cornea. No, that's nonsense. Light can still pass through. Light cannot pass through the lens. No, that's not an astigmatism. Refraction, which means the bending of the light rays by the cornea is uneven. That is correct. But let's check the last one. The lens cannot be more rounded. That's also nonsense. So astigmatism is when the light is bent because the cornea isn't even. Okay, so it's uneven. Which structures secrete progesterone during pregnancy? Now, you should know this. Number one, it is the corpus luteum. And then at about 10 to 12 weeks, the placenta takes over, producing progesterone and the corpus luteum disintegrates. It is not the adrenal gland. It is not the thyroid gland. And it's not the pituitary gland. 
What are the pituitary hormones that are influenced, that influence pregnancy or has anything to do with human reproduction? It is follicle stimulating hormone to stimulate the follicle and it is a uh, um, luteinizing hormone to cause ovulation and the formation of the, the um, corpus luteum from the empty graphene follicle. So it's got nothing to do with the pituitary or the thyroid or the adrenal gland. Okay, the corpus luteum secretes progesterone and if fertilization takes place, it continues to secrete progesterone until the placenta takes over. All right, um, our next set here, we start which one of the following, so one is in capital letters, shows the correct sequence, people, of an impulse from a receptor to a simple, in a simple reflex arc. It's a very simple reflex arc. So remember, it always goes receptor, sensory neuron, um, connector neuron, motor neuron, let me put arrows here, and effector, which will be a muscle or a gland. Okay, that is the order. You must know this order off by heart. So we know here that it's not a motor neuron and it's not an effector. It's going to be your sensory neuron. So sensory neuron through the dorsal root, which is at the back, to the motor neuron, so they've left the connector neuron out, to the effector. That is correct, but let's just check C. Sensory neuron, which is correct, through the dorsal root, to the effector, no. The effector is last. It's always what will be affected by the motor neuron. All right, so our answer is A. Which one of the following would be a disadvantage when a biological method is used to control an alien, alien, um, in, uh, alien plant invasion? Um, okay, so look here. Be able to control alien plants without the use of harmful chemicals. Oh, that, that is good, but that is an advantage. It's not a disadvantage. Some parts, so this is wrong, some part of the alien plant may be left to regrow um, when, when mechanically removed. Well, that's not a biological method, so that is wrong. The species introduced might be alien in the area, which is your biological method, okay, and outcompete the indigenous species. That is the correct answer, but let's just check. And D starts with chemicals. We are looking at a biological method, not a chemical method. So the answer is C. Easy peasy so far. Okay, then which one of the following is a consequence of the destruction of the wetlands. Now remember the wetlands is where we have water. So increased biodiversity, definitely not. You're not going to increase the number of species that are there. You're going to decrease it because you are destroying the wetland. Decreased water availability, definitely. But let's check the other two answers. Decreased global warming. Okay, listen, the destruction of the wetlands is not gonna have anything to do with global warming. Global warming is because of carbon dioxide and, and pollution. And increased water quality, you're not gonna have increased anything when you are destroying something, so that is definitely wrong. Okay, so people, even if you just had common sense and a bit of general knowledge, you would already have been able to do well in, this, in these multi-choices. Okay, so here we go. Nocturnal animals, Nocturnal animals are animals that come out at night, eh? So, nocturnal animals have the ability to see clearly in the dark, okay? Why? Because they only come out at night. So, they have bigger eyes? Definitely not. They have more rods in the retina? That is the correct answer. And I'll tell you why now. So, hang on. And then more cone cells? No. And no blind spot. They cannot not have a blind spot because the blind spot is at the point in the retina where the optic nerve exits the eyeball, all right? So there is not an organism on this planet. If it has an eyeball, it's going to have, and it has to take what it sees 
to the brain. So that will be via the optic nerve. And the reason it's the blind spot is there are no rod and code cells. They are the receptors of light in the eye. So your, and it's easy to remember, look at this. Your cone cells start with a C and your cone cells are the receptors for color. So C for cone cells, C for color. And your rod cells, the rod cells are there to pick up dark and light objects. So dim and bright. That is why in the dark you can't see color, you can't distinguish color. You can only distinguish color if there's a little, even if there's a bit of moonlight, you can start to distinguish a little bit of color. But in, in, in the dark, we only see in black and white because the rod and cone cells are, I mean, the rod cells are stimulated. Cone cells are stimulated when there is light. Okay. And now we do our last multi-choice question, which one of the following is correct regarding homeostatic control of glucose. There's only one hormone that controls your blood glucose levels, and that is insulin, okay? Um, glucagon will increase, insulin will decrease, and the problem is that insulin does it in order to maintain a homeostatic control. So, insulin and glucagon are both released by the pancreas, so we know that the pituitary is wrong. Okay, um, we know that insulin regulates blood glucose, so glucagon is wrong. Okay, we know that they are produced by the pancreas, so that's correct. But if, ink, if, if the effect of blood sugar glucose level is insulin increase or glucagon, and we know that's wrong and we know that's wrong because it's got nothing to do with glucagon. So the pancreas, the insulin decreases, definitely not. We're going to have the insulin increasing. So your answer is A. Remember, the pancreas releases insulin and glucagon. Insulin actually controls your blood glucose levels because it can inhibit glucagon from being produced. Right. So it is insulin that does the job.